guys, welcome back to Dak Buster, where I know absolutely nothing, especially after today. Oh. Well, it's been a day, and he knows everything about film and is going to tell me some interesting facts. Most things about film. Most things? You know? Didn't you get a degree on film? Allegedly. Allegedly? Doesn't feel like it nowadays. It's, it's hanging on my wall. <laughs> Very expensive piece of paper. It's great. Love to have it. Mine's in like a box that it probably should be like a <laughs> fireproof safe. And I'm like, oh, yeah. the plastic box is No fine. one is ever like, let me see your degree. I thought it was so bougie when you'd walk into like an office and they'd be up on the wall. Oh, and yeah. That's where mine like, is. It's in my office. Oh, see, mine's a spare bedroom and in the spare bedroom's a little... My vest is wonky. Sorry. I'm not I? wearing mine. You're not wearing I'm your not vest again. again. Take two. This I even brought. I even brought you your vest. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get fired. You are. It's fine. It's okay. He's like the worst employee, and that's saying a lot. What are you drinking today? Oh. You, he made something. He's like, I don't know how this <laughs> is gonna taste. There's watermelon vodka. And uh, strawberry watermelon mio and water. Oh, that sounds so, very good. So, you know, I'm fighting the hangover before it happens because there's water in my drink. Look at that. Look at yeah. you. See, I don't really drink, so I just drink a bubbler. Why do you drink a bubbler? Because <laughs> I don't really know. It's actually very strange. I don't like carbonated water. Bubblers, the highest addiction. My mom's like... You know, there's like uh, three coffees in a bubbler and you drink like six of them a day. And I'm like, well, step off, Shay. <laughs> I'm going to drink as many bubblers as I want in a day. They're better than pop. Yeah. I mean, like only, was it five calories? Five hey. calories. And I'm like, like, I think I told you that my fridge so pretty. I see the bubbler TikTok and it's like everyone's <laughs> fridge is like rainbow. <laughs> but I only like the pinks. I oh. like, I'm into the tropical dream stuff with the pinks. Like, they're so beautiful, arranged yeah. in pinks. I don't know what I'm drinking today. I think it's the cherry guava. Oh, the cherry guava is so good. Yeah, the cherry guava. Oh, jeez. Bubbler, mm. hit us up. Mm -hmm. I need some I need some bubblers. Mm -hmm. Sustain me through this podcast. <laughs> it's the only way I can get through today or any other day. a lot of people day. in our office that drink bubblers, actually. It's kind of like a go-to. Um, Everett, our Dak Jam girl, she loves bubblers. Our producer, yep. she likes to mix it with some vodka. Every once in a while, make mm -hmm. a little cocktail with it. Yeah. Yep. Not our Dak Jam girl. No, <laughs> not her. <laughs> she is under 21. Yeah, I love it. Hey, also, we're looking a little cozy this episode. I got these. We should it? mention that. <laughs> I don't know what they're called, actually. Fijays? I really don't. What's it say I on that know. tag? Fijays just, just <laughs> does not sound <laughs> What's like What's it the say word? on that? PJs. That's, oh, it is. That's just not a word that it's, you want on pants. PJs. <laughs> Why? I don't know, but look at this. You think they're just footy uh, yeah. pants? Yeah, uh-huh. But if you want to break the dogs free. There you go. Look at that. I mean, I struggle with like my sock slipping. Yeah. But at the same time, oh, there's some like, um, sponsor us, Fijays. Fijays. I do recommend a different name. <laughs> Fijays, send us a whole bunch of these. We will like. Oh, I would love that. Your like TikTok, Instagram, whatever Fijays. you want. Fijays. But like, <laughs> I mean, you got a creative name. I'll give you that much. Fijays, the you'll never get something. Cold. The something. The chosen pajamas of Dakbuster, or whatever they say in ads. Uh, Hashtag not sponsored <laughs> yet. Fijays, call me. Oh, you're not even wearing shoes. No, you don't have to with Fijays. I'm a, I'm the basic <laughs> this white. Sounds like an ad. <laughs> you don't have to with Fijays. We're not sponsored by Fijays, but he highly likes it. <laughs> I'm comfy. not sponsored by Uggs, but I'm a basic white girl, so Uggs. Oh. Sponsor. You know, but my, I should make a comment, my pajamas, <laughs> my pajamas. Could you, could you imagine we get like, we're like making all these free ads for Bubbler, and like, Uggs, and VJs in one Those suckers, episode. they don't know what they're doing, free advertising. <laughs> I do know, I spent four years in college learning about marketing. It's great. It's just great advertising. But yeah, what about your PJs for today? <laughs> my PJs traumatized me today. Oh, <laughs> My Uggs, my sweatpants, this is what you normally wear to bed, and then, um... You wear Uggs to bed? <laughs> actually, not to bed, but it's, like, the first thing I, like, slip on and really? off. Yeah. I love a good Ugg. Like an Ugg slipper? 
Oh, I do. I have Ugg slippers here oh. at the office. Do those bright, like green ones? Oh, yep. I just don't want to get them dirty. Makes sense. So I only wear them upstairs, and they're kind of clunky. So there's, it's hard to get them on and off. <laughs> it's people have tripped over them. Our producers have tripped over my other Ugg slippers. It happens. I'm trying to get the actual Ugg slippers. I forget what they're called, but they're out of stock. They're like one supermodel wore it, and you can't even get that Ugg slipper anywhere. It's like these. Like these took four months to get in, but they were out of stock throughout summer. Oh my gosh. I tried to order these back in June, like three years ago. You'd think they would know how popular they are and just like it just takes more. one Bella Hadid to wear an Ugg slipper coming home from Pilates and you can't find that fucking Ugg anywhere. That's wild. Anywhere. My cousin's still looking for these Uggs. But um she wants the black ones. Didn't even have to pay her. No. Now, we talked about rom-coms last time, romance comedy. <laughs> if you don't know what rom-com stands for, now you know. Uh, but today we're talking about straight-up comedies, and this is a very hard genre for me just because there's so many like funny movies that I can think of that are iconic and make me laugh. Some movies that maybe don't even fall into that genre, but I find funny, like, I mean... Forrest Gump is not necessarily, it's like a comedy drama. I think of it more of a drama, but it's still a hilarious movie. Yeah. So this genre is a little difficult for me. That's so, because like a lot of movies I was looking at, I was like, oh, it's total, like I looked at Bring It On. I was asked you, I was like, is that a comedy or a rom-com? I was like, there's rom-com elements, but it's mostly comedy. Actually, if you like, it's more about friendship, comedy. Girls just beefing with each other. I, I feel know. like comedy is the one genre that can be sprinkled into any and every movie. Just look at Ryan Reynolds, our God. Exactly. <laughs> you can have a serious movie and make it so funny. Exactly. Like horror can't really be sprinkled into. Oh, no. You got to turn on the on button and back. Oh, no. Oh, my God. This We're is the one TV. thing I went to look at, too. How come every time we forget the vest, we forget the TV? I don't know. There we are. There was a beep. Do you know I did too? I looked to the side. I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, there we are. Geez. Sorry about that. We're Technical difficulties. Please. <laughs> okay, but yes. Comedies. But yeah, like, I mean, other genres, you can't really, like, I mean, I guess drama you can sprinkle into everything, but like horror, you can't sprinkle into any movie. You could, just might not fit in. Uh, I mean, Paranormal Activity, they sprinkled some comedy in there. I mean, a little bit, I guess. Well, I mean, it's not full 50-50. <laughs> no, no, no. That's but comedy is it, comedy can easily be sprinkled across any genre. You yeah, know? yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, other genres, it's a little more difficult to, like, sprinkle it as heavily as comedy. Um, but yeah, I guess we can jump right into the movies that we selected. Do you want to go first? I always go first. Sure. I have two. So, I mean, Ooh. I can do one, then you can do one, then I can oh, do yeah, one. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Oh. Um, I'm sneak peeking. That's a very good one. I'm going to start with um, this guy. <laughs> we talked about that guy at length <sighs> not too long ago. Did we? Yeah. This is like my, honestly, for the longest time, when people would ask me what my favorite movie is, I would say Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Now I would probably say fair for the people that force gum maybe I I don't know I have a difficulty with that. Anytime anybody finds out I'm a film major, oh you 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 have a film degree? What's your favorite movie? I'm like, dude, I studied the art for four years. Like I have a degree in it. How am I gonna pick one? I'm sorry, I can't. Next question. Uh, no, but Ferris Bueller's Day Off was my go-to whenever someone asked me that question, because I'm like, I need one just to, like, end Asking it there. Asking him that question, what's your favorite movie, is, like, literally track, like, stopping him dead in his track. Like, his brain has to rewire. I go. It's the weirdest thing ever. Uh, it literally, um, it's that. Yep. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have to list, like, 20. <laughs> we talked about that when we were talking about our senior day. Oh, yes. Yes, we did. Yes. So Our senior hip day. Yes. Every year they play this movie on like one of the last days of their senior year at our high school. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, this is like, I can quote this movie word for word. Really? Uh, I can even do Matthew Broderick's weird little like, I don't even know. Go he ahead talks like it. He talks like out of the side of his mouth. Oh. So like when he says diamond. Like, he says it weird. So, I mean, 
I love doing lip syncs of this on TikTok because I'm like, Cameron is wound up so tight that if you took a lump of coal and stuck it up his ass, in two weeks, you'd have a diamond. Like, I just love this movie. Thank you. Thank you. One <laughs> so funny. Audience. Uh, I mean, straight up 80s classic. Yeah. Uh, John Hughes. I mean. I'm surprised it hasn't been remaked. I, the concept Ooh. has. But I'm surprised this hasn't been a remake. Do you remember they tried with uh, Cameron Dallas? They the tried. The Vine star. They did like a, oh, what was it? Expelled or something was the name of it. Total like E-list movie. Maybe like F. <laughs> There's an F Horrible. List? Yeah. Horrible movie. But it is Ferris Bueller's Day Off in today's world essentially but so, they just made it so cheesy it wasn't even it worth was watching. so bad and he's not an actor uh, cameron you're not an actor but he tried to be for a hot minute oh he tried a lot of things rapping acting someone should have stopped him a long time ago <laughs> jesus <laughs> he tried yeah. drugs i i'm just saying he's tried it all controversial yeah uh no ferris bueller's day off i just love this movie, you know, what's funny is this movie doesn't have like a clear protagonist. So it's like a. I mean, the principal in, and the sister. But yeah, but it's not clear. There's the, like multiple of them. In the film, like studying world, like it's a battle. It's like, who's Lecture the protagonist? Me. Who is it? Uh... Like I had. A full-on class period once where we were battling out who the protagonist of Ferris Bueller's Day Off was because we were talking about like protagonist, antagonist, and stuff. And I raised my hand and I'm like, I think it's Cameron. And oh, he's like, he does go against himself. And he goes, Yep, that's who the protagonist is. And I'm like, Look at you, smart. Right? And everyone looked at me like, Whatever, you don't know nothing. I'm like, hmm. You know what's funny is that. I watched that movie, and the only thing I could relate really to is Phineas and Ferb. I wonder <laughs> if the like creator of Phineas and Ferb, um, Candace, the yeah. sister in it. I wonder if he pulled like, like the sisters trying to always catch him in something. Valid. I wonder if she like Valid. he like pulled from that film or yes. something like that. Because as soon as I watched it, I was like, "Whoa, childhood Didn't memories." Think about that. Childhood oh my memories. Gosh. Yes. Pulling at and, me right uh, now. Oh, what's her name? Um. Jennifer. Jennifer, um, yes. Um, I it's I actually just thought of it. Uh, Gray. Yes, thank you. Oh yeah. my gosh, Dirty Dancing. Exactly, uh, she's iconic. Uh, in Red every Dawn. Way. She's great. Um, but yeah, the cast is fun. Matthew Broderick. Uh, I mean, all three of those guys and gal, <laughs> the two guys and the gal. Take they're Jennifer. They're yeah, Jennifer. She's you know. Second story, secondary story. Oh, yeah. There. What's her name in it, too? The other girl. Yep. I know what you're Sloan. talking about. Sloan. Yeah, Sloan. Uh, but yeah, and then randomly, here comes Charlie Sheen in the yeah. <laughs> in the scene at the jail. He's awesome in it, too. Like, so funny. Uh, but John Hughes, you can't go wrong, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Love his movies. They have such an 80s feel that's just like, y you can't remake it. And maybe that's why people don't touch it because they're like, uh uh, I can't. I mean, they tried and I think it just turned out really bad. Yeah. They've taken nuances. I, there definitely has been like spoofs of this made. Oh, yeah. Or like certain The tropes stuff. are in lots of movies for sure. Yeah. But yeah, that's up there for me because it just makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. We'll see if I can get mine out. Perfect. It's probably going to be a struggle, I'll be honest. Oh. oh can you help me? Sorry. <laughs> My chair's locking. Oh, shh. Oh, I got two copies. Oh. So, oh. <laughs> isn't that hilarious? This is actually my brother's favorite comedy. Really? And the reason I did that is because my favorite comedy is actually Kicking and Screaming. Oh, uh, Will Ferrell. But we don't have it on DVD or VHS here. And I love Kicking and Screaming. I believe it's his under most underrated I would agree. comedy movie. Because every... I just remember watching it as a child over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And it got funnier each time. Yeah. And as you got, like into your adulthood you saw the other adult nuances and you're like i understand why it's family yeah. friendly hilarious fun i watched the lily scenes the lily scenes were hilarious yes. he gave them bird flu <laughs> it was basically the but this one it was like the prime time you had stepbrothers you had talladega nights kicking and screaming yeah. elf like these all yeah. came out it was will ferrell's heyday 
Oh yeah. Basically the mid early Anchorman, mid all of it like came out 2000. Close to yeah, early 2000s. it was like back to back. There wasn't a movie that Will Ferrell wasn't in. I was gonna. I Who's brought his a... son. Is it Josh Hutcherson in Kicking and Screaming? Yeah. No, not in Kicking no. and Screaming. Josh Hutcherson. He um is the. Uh, the um, ba- like the, the the grandson. Yes, he's his the, brother. He's the, his brother. The brother. <laughs> his brother. That's hilarious. That's his brother. I, I just love that movie. Yeah, because his dad, so Robert Duvall, uh, has <laughs> has a son that's the same age as Will Ferrell's son. Uh, and then it also in Kicking uh, and Screaming. Kate Walsh is in there. Yeah, Kate Walsh plays the mom. It's star studded. I love. You that also movie. have the Bears. Coach. Yeah, uh, Mike Ditka. Okay, I was like, yeah. My uh, dad has a uh, sign poster, and he just, yeah, of him flipping <laughs> off. Like, I think it's like the ref or something like that. That's hilarious. And it's signed and, by Mike Ditka. Yeah, and he got it at the Mall of America, and That's it, like so awesome. randomly just put down like a hundred bucks, and it was like, well, because his bidding or something, he's like, well, if it's a, it's a hundred bucks, like whatever, I don't yeah. care. And then he got a call, and they're like, we can pick it up or ship it to you, like, a week later. And he's like, oh, yeah, ship it on That's up. That's so cool. It was amazing. But, um, I mean, that whole star-studded cast is amazing. But, I mean, then this star-studded yeah. cast. I is- didn't watch that one for a long time because it was, like, too risque for me, I think. My parents just didn't want me to watch my it. My parents were like, I, yeah, it's I okay. Until I stole it from their cabinets. Really? And watched it because my dad loves this movie. I don't but know But Kicking what... and Screaming, I did rent all the time from it's the movie It's very childhood-esque. I don't know when this came out, but as soon as this came out, my dad, I think my dad took my brother there to theaters. Like, I'm 100%. Oh, wait? My brother can quote this movie word for word. Really? You give him a scenario like the dining room scene, word for word. It's insane. I just also figured out um, it's pretty obvious, but like the product placement in this movie is meant yeah. to pay for the movie. Yeah. I I always knew that in the back of my mind, even as like a young kid. I was like, oh, there's a reason they have all those food there. You learn it kind of at a young age, actually. But I mean, the Wonder Bread cart. You wonder how much like Wonder Bread shelled out just to be in a Will Ferrell movie. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And just to pay for the movie. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. It came out in... 2006. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think my dad took my brother to theaters to watch this 100%. But yeah, my brother can quote this movie word for word, but anything Will Ferrell. The cast is wild in that one, too. It's just so random. I mean. You know, you got Amy Adams. Uh, The one, the only Sue Sylvester, Jane Lynch is in this movie. Oh, she is? Yes. And they give names on the back of this, actually. Leslie Bibb, of course, the wife. Yes. Um, um, Sasha um, Baron Cohen. Yeah, plays what's Hilarious. his name? I don't even know Jacques or whatever Jean Gerard, <laughs> Jacques. Jean, Jean. And then you have John C. Riley, of course. I mean, was I, you this know, one I, directed by? Um, it has to be by their guy. It has to be. What's his name? They had beef recently. Yeah, because he uh, cast John C. Riley in it and didn't in that um, readaptation of the coach, like the biopic from. Yes. Adam McKay. Adam McKay, yes. He's been doing a lot recently, too. Yeah, he has. You know, that's that's one of the more funny movies. You know, it's slapstick comedy. It's old school Will Ferrell. If you don't like stupid slapstick comedy, you're not going to like this movie. But a lot of people love it. I think it's probably one of his highest rated movies, like from a fan's perspective, I feel like. I also feel like nowadays comedies try to imitate what he does, but they make it so crude. Yeah. That they it, there's no longer the innocence. Will Ferrell brings the innocence. He has to it. the weird line of that he so never crude. crosses to either side. He's always just walking on this line. He knows that line well. He knows it so well. Where it's like, should he be saying this? Oh, it's fine. In a children's like yeah. Kicking Screamings in a children's show. Yeah. You're like. Mm-hmm. What? But he just cracks me up. I mean, he could do nothing and I still laugh. <laughs> like, he has a way of doing it that's just like no other. Makes sense. Love it. Uh, what's uh, your other one? I've got one more. I mean, we should just do a compilation of us struggling. 
to open this yeah. drawer. Yes. Uh, Adam Sandler has to be talked about when we're talking about comedies, I feel like. He's one um, of the big ones. It's It was difficult, honestly, for me to pick one Adam Sandler movie because I'm like, oh, I don't know which one to pick, but here we are. Just go on Netflix. Um, you'll watch all of them. Yeah, all of them are there. It's fine. Uh, but I did pick Big Daddy because this one is like a wholesome classic. You it's know? just when you do think of Adam Sandler, it's probably the one that jumps to everyone's mind. Yeah, this, uh, Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, like those three are top three for me for Adam Sandler. I mean, he's had good movies, but like the like the latest one, which is 10 years old, is Just Do It. Just go with it? Just go with it. Sorry. I, you know well, what I said? Well, he's had I said, more. Yeah, he's had more since, but like absolute hits. Um, yeah. Murder. Yeah. Uh... Murder, Murder something. Mystery. Murder mystery. That was pretty good. But then were I didn't Jennifer hate it. Aniston. And the sequel's coming soon. Oh, love it. With but Jen. He and just him. hasn't repeated that nuance of just go with it yet. Yeah. I mean, Grown Ups 1 was great. I was around the same time as just go with it. Yeah. Uh, Pixels, I didn't hate. I liked Pixels. It's, it's I liked the. It's, you just didn't hate it. They were all good, but they weren't like yeah. Adam Sandler. And I like the at- nostalgia in Pixels more than I like. The movie. The movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, but yeah, he hasn't had quite as big of a hit as he did back in his heyday. Um, you seen his movie Gems? I have. Uh, Righteous Gemstones or whatever. What's it no, called? No, no, that's it is, the actual that's Gems. The, that's the actual comedy. What's it called, though? It's, it's called Gems. It's something Gems. I'll look it up, but like. It's something Gems. Hidden Gems? No. Gems. We'll see who's faster. Gems. The Righteous Gemstones. That's a great TV show, but I that's haven't watched not it, it yet, actually. It's very funny. Uh, uncut Gems. Uncut Gems. Yeah, With Julia what's her Fox. Face? Yes, Julia Fox. It's great. Uh, what did she say? So and so used me as. Uh, it her. It's based on her. Someone on her life. The director did. <laughs> yeah, it's like someone written or like directed on her life. Yeah, it actually is. Isn't that hilarious? What a meme. No, and he was brilliant in it. It was just a drama, so it was different, you know? Mm-hmm. He is a great actor. So versatile. Yeah. Which, it's great to see him stepping into that, though. That's what I was saying. Like, his yeah. comedies needed to break, I feel like. So to see him in something like that yeah. was amazing to He's see. He's done a couple serious roles. I don't remember yeah. what the latest one on Netflix was, but he was like a a serious role again. Yeah. Um. No, but, I mean, I don't know why we keep... uh questioning these comedic actors who step into dramatic roles like they're not going to be able to do it you got like a steve carell you've got uh even a will ferrell who has done a a serious role uh adam sandler like to do comedy it takes such a high level of acting like it does not blow me away when i see these actors in serious dramatic roles that's why they say um Dramatic actors can't do comedies, mm. but comedic actors can do everything. Yeah. They said a lot of dramatic actors are like, it's you see a comedic actor come down to your level and you actually get scared. Yeah. Because you're like, they're so well versatile and they can play off your emotions and everything you do because that's what they're taught to do, like yeah. to play off. Yeah. They play off of each other. They have timing like no other. Yeah. Uh, They understand emotions. Like I feel like... They just get it. And a lot of them don't have the same training as some of these dramatic actors. You know? They got even better training through comedy. Yep. And probably hardships in their actual life, if you think about it. Because I feel like you always hear about comedians struggling. And their um, Netflix series. You always feel yeah. like the hardships of me growing up. That is 100% positive. So it's like they're just digging deep and they're just doing it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like uh, Big Daddy classic movie Mm -hmm. i mean you got the sprouse twins was it both of them or was it just cole it's just cole i thought so yeah yeah uh you got cole sprouse in there with him adorable this is right around the time that he's on uh friends as well Mm -hmm. as ben he's been acting for so long so long and then they take a little break and then it's like oh we're back both of them their break wasn't even that little if no, you really think about it, they went to college. <laughs> it feels like forever in the entertainment industry. They went to college. Yeah. It wasn't that long. No, it wasn't. But-
but uh big daddy i love it it's heartwarming it's funny um you know you also have like mr deeds which is a classic yes, adam sandler so good. Um, every like adam sandler movie is just it's well put together they're even the ones where people are like oh it's not his best it's like such a well put together movie <laughs> though it's so it's so strange. funny and there's always an underlying like pull at the heartstrings yeah, like moment. moment in his movies it's classic mm -hmm. i love it um i hope the second murder mystery is either better or just as good as the first one i love him and jen ann together i love him and drew barrymore together uh blended did you like blended did you it's see okay. it yeah i yeah. did see it it was okay it was okay it's actually probably one of my least favorite ones really? out of all of them i liked his halloween one better than that no hubie yeah, halloween i did really i liked blended more it makes me like it was oh. definitely more physical comedy than like comedy comedy yeah <laughs> it's like drew barrymore carrying her kid and knocking him on the side of the mm. door like it makes it made me laugh uh and it did feel like one of his older comedies to me where it was like a good balance but i don't know it wasn't super popular but he hasn't had a first major... 50 dates now that you said that, oh, that 50 one... first dates is like my fave probably it's so good remember watching that wedding time singer god we could go I mean, on forever and ever. adam sandler has a catalog List. List. he is he's got all the hits i love but... like people dressing up as halloween for him from him yes and he's just iconic yeah. He can wear whatever he wants. He, exactly. He They're not even around. like dressing up as one of his characters. They're dressing up as how he yeah. goes out in public. <laughs> he rolls up to like talk shows wearing his like basketball his shorts Uggs, and like his basketball <laughs> yeah. shorts, his Uggs, his frumpy t shirt, That's maybe classic. like uh maybe a jacket. I don't know. That's classic. It's great. I do love Adam Sandler. He's and, phenomenal. You know, I, I hope he has another really great comedy coming down the pipeline. But he's a great dramatic actor as well. So great. But on to our next segment. Oh, uh, we have so much to talk about. We actually had to list out what we wanted to talk about. Uh, the first thing is that Hunter over here is going to do rapid fire questions about Grey's Anatomy to me. Uh, he skipped last season. Yeah. And then he started watching this season with no context of what's happening this season. Yeah. So a lot of stuff happened at the beginning of this new season of Grey's Anatomy. So he's going to ask me a whole bunch of questions. Just and then so I'm going to do my best to answer them. So big Grey's fan here. I binge watched Huge. all of it like throughout college and like watched it with my mom and dad when I was growing yeah. up and stuff. But like binged it on Netflix when I was in college. Like, I watch twice. it twice, three times a year. <laughs> Is that bad? That's so much. Is that bad? There's like 19 seasons. I skip a few seasons. Oh, yeah. I stop at season 11. Let's be honest. Like I push myself past season five, but season 11. You, you go, is, is that bad? I don't know. I respect it. It's See, that's fun. why I force myself to watch the other seasons. But that's great. Uh, yes. Yes. So a few questions that I just have. He has to catch up from his past season. Okay, um, go ahead. I think I'm three episodes in. Okay. Ish. Um, I think it. Oh, you're only three episodes in. Something like that. Okay, because they're at the mid-season finale already. Oh. Yeah, it won't come back till February. This is the weirdest oh, great. thing ever. I picked the best time to start watching. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you did actually. Um. Okay. First one. What's up with Miranda? Where is she? What's she doing? <laughs> Miranda what? went on sabbatical. She was chief. Yes. Okay, she went. On I sabbatical. remember when she was chief. She had like another heart attack again, and then went on sabbatical. Because and of her OCD or what? Also, um, on Station 19, which we don't watch, uh, <laughs> the one guy died and left her and um, what's it, uh, Warren, uh, their daughter Prue. So she's trying to adopt Prue. So she's trying to adopt Prue. Um, the intern program went underneath the water. Um, so it's just a lot on her that she can't deal with, and she felt like she was lonely and so on an she island. Was like, so she's like, I need a break. Like she literally, for her own well-being and her own like family and stuff, she just needed a break. So then Gray became the interim chief. Yeah, and she was actually like leaving to go to Minnesota at that point to be with what's his name. Yeah, why do I know this man? That was my second question. Oh, he was the guy that um she did a transplant surgery for like back in season thirteen. On or him? Yeah, on him, and oh. he's actually a transplant surgeon. And yeah. on a kidney. So he was there for like an episode and then he came back. This wasn't in the other season before. This mm. was all last season. I oh, don't this know. is her new love interest. This is how far off I am. You know what's worse? I can't remember his name, actually. Oh my God. That's I just so remember bad. that he was from Minnesota. Oh, yeah. He is from Minnesota and he uh, gave up his job 
and they were doing the long distance back and forth because um meredith found like some stuff for parkins she like she's doing research so she was going back and forth from the mayo oh. clinic yeah so then she was doing a lot of like research so she met him um there because he works at the mayo clinic okay. that's where he does his transplants okay okay good 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 uh joe and link what's happening oh they hooked up <gasps> last season Oh my god! Yeah, and then it's the will they, won't they scenario. Yeah, like I'm feeling that, and it it got over the hump of like the tension of will they, won't they, and now they're back on it again. I don't, I don't know why. The first day the first intern showed up and he yeah. like hooked up with her. I just forget about that. Like that's no big deal. But it's like they're back on the will they, like won't the they. link and the intern thing. Yeah. It was like the I first think, like I think two that's episodes. Just a, and then, yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's a reminiscent of the old Grey's Anatomy. That's what they yeah, did with stay the away interns. From elevators. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, 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 that's what they did for the like to bring back nostalgia. I feel like, but yeah, no, it's obviously they're gonna end up together. It's just yeah. like they're gonna. It's Grey's Anatomy. They're gonna slowly drag Makes it out. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, what's going on with Owen? Why can't he perform surgeries without Teddy in the room? What's <laughs> happening? Do you not know. No, <laughs> I just know he's not allowed to do anything by himself. He hasn't technically lost his license, but he's under surveillance. He like gave medicine uh, to people to kill themselves. Oh, so basically uh, it was for like war veterans and they had like lung damage, which is like happens when you're near the battlefield. And then <laughs> the like people started. <laughs> I don't know how this guy on track for Grace Abbey or why he's even a doctor still. Where but was he? Was he, he like, at Grace Sloan? Yeah, he's at Grace Sloan. One of the patients came in and was like, he was at a PTSD like meeting and he met the guy. He gave him the medicine to off the guy. And then his <sighs> wife went around telling the other patients. So another patient went up and was like, you need to do this for me and like threaten him. And then when they didn't do that... I think, I don't know if he turned him into the board or whatever. I kind of actually fast forward through their part because it's so like annoying and unrealistic. Oh, no. Like he should be in jail. And then they yeah, just took off. People. You literally didn't think they were going to come back because they literally packed up the last episode and just took off. And then Teddy all of a sudden, yeah, then all of a sudden they popped up and well, was like Owen in here. And like, it's okay. It's okay. He gave medicine to kill a guy. But you know, like it's, he's, he just has to be supervised. So Teddy has every right to be pissed. I would be, I would, I'd be livid. I think I'd have divorce papers. I'll be honest. Yeah. She, but she's been through a lot. they're making love. It's fine. I know. What's up with that? Like they have sex every episode. Yeah. What's going on? It's like I hate you, but passionate sex. Yeah. It's so yeah. weird. <laughs> um, what happened to all of the interns? The only oh, one left is. I told you the is, intern program got um. Oh yeah, it got axed, but it got axed. So oh, everyone oh, just because quit Schmidt, or, it, yeah, Schmidt they is still all, there. all technically it was down for a year. So we're like a year in the future. So Schmidt was on Joe's service at the beginning, as you saw. Yeah. On uh and uh, then they LB- got new interns. G-Y-N. Well, they need residents, and all they have is for a resident is Schmidt. That's why he acts like a crazy <laughs> person. And then what's her name? The blonde girl is now working at the bar. Yeah. Um she's and making more money to get at the her bar. Back. So she makes more money at the bar. Like, let her work at the bar. Yeah, but I thought she was in love with Gray. I like she went through a lot last season, like oh, a lot. No. In Emotional. a sense, like yeah. Well, I mean, like literally, they were just put through the ringer with like, will they? Won't they have a job? Will they? Won't they have a residency program? Didn't Richard have a daughter, or is that Maggie? That's Maggie. Okay, I thought yeah. so. <laughs> that's old news. Yeah, that's, that's old. I knew that. Season. I Are knew you that. binging again? I don't know what's happening. It's been so long. I'm yes. like, who is who? Who is who? I got to catch up here. Um, Zola, she's having panic attacks. Yeah, is that, is that new this excuse- season? or That's new this season. That's just an excuse to get Meredith off the show. Really? Yeah, that's for Ellen to go do her mini series. Uh, you know what's weird? I thought that she must be like a recurring guest actor, I guess now. Yeah. And she's not coming back to Grey's Anatomy now. I'm pretty positive. They really smoothly exit her out of that show like they're like oh she's just not gonna be here this season no she's just gone i'm pretty really? positive i think the it's way sh- it ends the mid-season well it's really weird they're like zola is now freaking out that she's gonna have alzheimer's and she's the smartest child alive i got that from her speech so um this is all just relatively new so meredith has to do best and has to move her child to 
Boston. And you know what's ironic as I'm sitting there? I'm like, you know what? If you had just gone to Boston with Derek at the beginning. Derek would be alive. Derek would be alive. You know, you wouldn't be holding your post-stick note as your flame- house is going up in yeah. flames. Night-night. Pondering the thought of having him. Like, everything would just make sense. But you chose to go to Boston now. Ugh. Is Could have Matt Minnesota boy early? going with? I don't know. I I personally don't think so because I bet you he's going to turn into like a reoccurring, like a actual like full on character. Yeah. So I bet you he's going to do the richer thing where I see her all the time. Yeah. Okay. You yeah, doctors Richard. work all the time. And yeah. Then, that's like, just their way to keep Catherine Catherine in like the yeah, show. Yeah. It's just weird. But like she's rarely ever in an episode. You just hear her name mentioned. <laughs> she's just directing the episode. Yeah. What's she doing? Oh my gosh. And Jackson Avery came back. Yeah, just to get Meredith back. Just to get oh, Meredith out. do you know what he's in? Murders in the Building, season two. Oh, three? Two? Is three, he in number three, two? Three, 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 three. I'm sorry. He's going to be in three. He's going to be in three. Sorry to like, pivot off Grace and I. I think we ran it dead. Yeah, but I mean, um, like, we'll see what happens. I'm three episodes in. I'll try to catch up and keep up, but it's just hard. Like it's more. not the same. You know, it hasn't been the same I since I do like Derek the died. interns. I do like the interns. They need to focus more on the interns and less on the older characters. Yes and no. I See, the issue I'm having is Meredith is the only one I enjoy seeing interact with She's the gone. interns. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, bring back Bailey and then maybe I'll enjoy maybe, it. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Or bring back Kate Walsh uh, permanently. That would be the only way. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I do want to talk about Only Murders in the Building, but we have another show that we promised we would talk about this episode, so we got to do it. Okay, okay. I just want to mention he's in Murders in the Building. We can come back to Only Murders in the Building next episode. Next episode. Yep. But HBO, comedy, drama, dramedy, what is it? Traumatity? Because it's traumatic. The one show that he would not watch, but I made him. Well, season two. I had already seen season one. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, season two, he's going to binge watch it like House of Dragon. I was going to binge when it all came out. Have you still watched House of Dragon? Nope. <sighs> I've been keeping up with uh, White Lotus. So hard. The one hour on a Sunday. Yeah. Oh, my God. I really burnt the popcorn. <laughs> it's really bad. It's bad. I don't know what happened. Burnt popcorn. Let's talk about it. Night, night. Oh, White Lotus is last episode. Oh, my God. Phenomenal. Okay. I What's don't... her name? I'm sorry, the wife. Yes. I, I really need to learn their names, but I just refer to them as their general, like, their real persona. Names. No, like, their persona characters, too. Oh, yeah. Like, I can only think of Theo, she, Aubrey. Yeah. Cl- Chloe? Theo that? and his wife, phenomenal couple. They played mind games, and they're like, I don't know what they're doing. Phenomenal mind games. I don't know what games. they're doing, and it's messing with me. Oh, he's like. I think they're swingers, but also trying to I get a deal. I think they're swingers, also. Yeah. And, um,. She she's gonna come up on top. She finds the butt dead body. Spoiler alert! But I mean, you yeah. literally figure out at the beginning. There's a dead body. Yeah. Um. Who do you think the dead body is? God, I hope it's Jennifer Coolidge's husband. I know the son of a bitch. Tanya. I swear he's cheating. When that psychic came in, it's big like, time. She's like. Going Before to we bottom. continue this season Sorry. two, though, we gotta go into season one because season one is out. Has been out. Won tons of Emmys. It's the first season of a show. It's a limited series, not guaranteed for any other seasons after, but it's just so damn good. It did not pick up traction until award season, and I watched that when it got released. It was and I heard filmed nothing. in the pandemic. They filmed it like why? towards the end of the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, and when it came out, I feel like it was not talked about at all because i don't think i even saw it until it was completely out i brought it up at work i said i'm watching a new show called the white lotus you guys should watch it and no one was listening to me at that because i had seen trailers for it like it was like, not forever ago and i was like i don't know i'm not hearing anything it's not being posted it got a late hype but it was like a binge worthy thing i watched it in like two days and you can't describe the white lotus because no there is a plot, but there's 500 other plots mixed in, and you're dealing with personalities yeah. in the plots. And no one is a good person. <laughs> you're looking at the complexity of like how everyone's just a fucking shitty person. Yeah. They're all like these like hoity-toity rich people that are on a vacation complaining about their champagne problems. Yeah, I was just thinking it's literally the definition of champagne problems. And then bigger issues like 
come awry, like, Well, you know throughout. who created it? Mr. Mike White. Oh, my gosh. And he created, uh, what else? He created something. Uh, he had tons of movies. He, he had, like, a lot of cult classic but movies that I he I love wrote. that he was on Survivor, correct? Yeah, what? what I sent you. And when he was on Survivor, he just sat back and let them do all the work. And just, like, was like, yo, yeah, guys, guys. And then he would just kind of go find the ward or whatever and be like, what are these idiots talking about? <laughs> he wrote about? Pitch Perfect 3. Yes, Pitch Perfect. Uh, he wrote um, There's something fun Natural on Libre, um, School of Rock. School of Rock. Like, that was what? It. He he was in School Freaks of Rock. Freaks and Geeks. Freaks and Greeks, yeah. Like, this guy. Dawson's and- Greek. Like, I mean, this man has... He came out of the woodwork for me. Land, he's in Zombieland. Like he, he's iconic. He needs to actually be in the White Lotus too. Because I would love to him see him as, as a, character. a character. I said he gave me the vibe of the dad in the first season. Yeah, he was totally the dad of the first season. He's a funny guy. Like, and he's yeah. awkward. I feel like him and Jennifer Coolidge as a couple would be hilarious because times, yeah. he's the only reason why Jennifer Coolidge did it. She said yeah. no, time and time again. Like. She said she's not going to do it. She was making up excuses about, like, health stuff. Like, did not want to do it. Oh, but now she's in Italy for season two. Yes. Now she's in a lot and of And then shows. her friend told her, like, you got to do it. Like, yeah. it was, like, mid-pandemic when they were filming, like I said. So she was, like, I just. I, she's I, apprehensive about I, her oh health. Oh, my yeah. God. I don't want to do it. And then, like, t- someone, one of her friends talked her into it. And she's really good friends with Mike White. Oh. And and uh it was he said season two that you know sicily with jennifer just sounds like fun like yeah let's do it and he's already planning like uh white lotus in like japan or like with jennifer in someplace else with jennifer because he's like you know and maybe she's the staple she's the only thing that makes sense yeah. it's either the it's the white lotus and jennifer coolidge that show people, is jennifer coolidge i think people would riot if jennifer wasn't in another season if they made one i feel like it's going to be the kind of thing where he, i only can relate to the voice like when the coach goes away for like one season oh and you they bring in such a great phenomenal like voice coach it's like yeah. they're gonna bring in replace her with someone extra great for like a season and then they're gonna like disappear the next yeah. season and then it's jennifer back i can guarantee that's what's gonna happen with the white lotus i mean they do a great job of having like an amazing cast uh and I'm not married to the cast because I know it's kind of more of an anthology series now. Mm-hmm. But I want Jennifer in it because it just makes sense. Her character just makes sense in every season because she's literally talking. Like, at this point, the story is told based off of where Tanya goes. And her life is so complex, too. <laughs> like, Because the assistant dropping bonds, like, I think her dad, like, did some stuff to her. And, like, she got a lawsuit. And then, but you find out the first season, she's spraying her mother with ashes. Yeah. And then, like, the husband. <laughs> so. Been married, like, three, so bad, four times. So and funny. she's, like, the last episode, you've been married four times, including you. I thought it was three. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just, like. She's so great. And when when she's in, like, interviews talking, I'm, like, so what part of you is a character in your movies and what part of you is you? Because her, like, dry humor that's like not even like dry humor it's just how she delivers things is just hilarious you know what's so annoying is that she's basically the same character but not she plays the exact same character but so vastly different yeah in each like the watcher that is someone extremely vicious that needs to come out in the white lotus one of these seasons like then we also need Legally Blonde, Stifler's mom, or she's just yep. aloof and probably on a couple of drugs and a martini or two. Oh, my God. Where she, oh, she needs a White Lotus rehab. That needs to be one. Like, you know, the rehabs where it's not a rehab, a relaxation yeah. retreats. That's a big thing on TikTok recently where they're like going to these relaxation retreats where you hike a whole bunch and you like relax. So I think that would be really cool. It's like influencer based. Yeah, that would be interesting. To see her, like, go decompress yes. after the divor- divorce. I Credit, please. Honestly, <laughs> he's got to be one of the dead ones. You Who? can't create the- a character to be so awful and not have him be one of those dead I mean, dead it's bodies. always the off one, awful one, too. You notice how they're killing off the men? Yeah. 
<laughs> the really toxic white uh, privilege. I don't remember men. who died in the other one. It was uh, the manager. That's right. Yeah, he went nuts though. He liked he already had and you know what's funny is that you go in the white lotus and all your problems you go to relax and that's what they advertise it as and then all your problems just implode. Yeah. But that's like every family on vacation. I go on vacation with my family and the first three days is just hell with them. <laughs> Valid. It's hell. Valid. We're all trying to adjust being close quarters together. We Everything all hate that each go other. Wrong will go wrong. Oh, exactly. That is vacation in a nutshell. Yeah. I think that what that's what makes it relatable. I oh fuck never mind I'm not answering whatsoever go ahead I have breaking news breaking news go breaking news within the last like hour two hours it's not anything to do with Taylor right no I'd be fucking traumatized go ahead Disney has officially announced that a third installment of a major movie is in the works should I guess Yes. Is it animation? Nope. Oh. That's hard. I can't think of a non-animated movie. <laughs> it's huge. This Princesses? is Princesses? Yes. But not animated. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know. Is it like a reanimated? Like, is it animated then? It nope. Was, so it's not the original? No. And it, it is so the original. It was never animated. And it's like, it's not disenchanted because it's coming nope. out. With... Think leave? big. Think huge. Think like one of the most iconic movies. Not Frozen. Frozen's animated. God, he's going to make me work. Are you going to make grab it? <gasps> no, no, I literally said that today. I said, I told him, I said, I told him, <laughs> God, I'm going to actually fucking cry. How crazy is that? I told him, what were you watching earlier? And I said, don't, why would they say something Fall like that? About, uh, why would they uh, say it's something like Freaky Friday? Them, a Freaky Friday. I was like, it's like them lying to me about making a Princess Diaries 3 or Illegally Blonde 3. And they're making a Princess Diaries 3. I'm not kidding. I like actually <laughs> fucking cry right now. Princess Diaries three is in development at Disney. This is like development. Uh, Princess Diaries <laughs> three script. This? What? Can we clip this and get this out? Cause like, <laughs> right? It's gotta go out. I'm sorry. Like it's uh, like help, heart palpitations. <laughs> Princess Diary three. Princess Diaries 3, which is set to be a continuation of the films led by Anne Hathaway instead of a reboot or remake. The report notes that Hathaway herself has no deal to return as of now, but she has often said that she would be open to returning to the franchise should the possibility present itself. So fans will just have to wait for more information regarding that. They apparently had a script from Anne Hathaway when she was doing, I think, the rework promo. She said they had a script. It just didn't get as far, and then the pandemic happened, and then Julie Andrews said she just hasn't heard anything. Yeah. So I and literally, I'm not kidding, today I turned and looked at him. They were talking about Freaky Friday, and I was like, don't tell me about that about Freaky Friday because it's it's just empty promises like Princess Diaries and Legally Blonde. Franchise veteran Deborah Martin Chase returning to produce. So that's always a good sign. You get like the same... But they've talked about this, and it's actually come so close so many times where I actually think this might come to fruition. And if it's a continuation of the Anne Hathaway series, you, you almost have to have Anne Hathaway in it. So that movie came out in, I believe, 2000. Could you check uh, on 2001, that? 2001, I believe, 2001. is so what I was the last four. article said. And that was probably one of the first two movies that I ever watched, like, in, was able to comprehend, if that makes sense that made like you wanted to be that girl yeah it was like so inspirational i wanted to be that girl i mean like every the <laughs> foot pop and kiss it was like princess diaries 2 coming out was the biggest thing of the year to happen to me. yeah like princess diaries 2 was 
something so phenomenal and like i still it's almost like kids when frozen 2 came out that was frozen 2 princess diaries 2 was my you equivalent see how fast i found that movie too? you did and i know it's down there because <laughs> i was like <laughs> you, where is it so like i don't know over a year ago we all in our office went through a depressive state and i came down <laughs> and i picked out that movie and i'm like it's the only movie that literally makes me happy Bring you joy. <laughs> it literally does it just i'm sorry it just Ugh. How that, crazy is that, though? I actually needed that today. I was telling you at the beginning you of the episode, manifested it's a rough that. day. You put it out there in the universe, and It's boom. like that one, like, over a year ago when I was talking to her former co-worker. I'm like, God, did they, do you feel like another Taylor Swift album's coming out? And then that night, she released Evermore. Oh, my God. Do you remember that? I don't remember I was that, talking but... to her. Oh, you might have been back at school. I was talking to her. No, you might have been downstairs. Um, I was saying, you feel like another Taylor Swift is album's coming out and she's like well she just released evermore and i'm like yeah i just feel like another one's coming out and i mean folklore and then evermore came out that night it's my psychic sense yeah it what is. the heck it is <gasps> it's when i talk about taylor she just gives me powers <laughs> tell me taylor Am swift needs to soon? do a <laughs> I don't know. I wish I could. I would have been rich already. <laughs> Taylor Swift needs to do a song on The Princess Diaries. Oh. I can guarantee she'll get her um, EGOT or whatever. Like, I could guarantee Very Kelly well Clarkson. Could. Yep. I'm just saying, Taylor Swift put a song on Princess Diaries 3. <laughs> just I'm remember just this saying. when the movie comes out. <laughs> if that happens, I'm just saying, wild. can I be invited to the premiere if that happens? Oh, geez. Can I just like meet Anne Hathaway? And Taylor Swift in person and Julie Andrews, because those are my icons, I my heroes. I'm so excited to just bring this news. I'm like, oh my God, I can't hold it in. I hope they don't mess it up. I, uh, <laughs> the celebrity I get told I look like is Anne Hathaway. Oh. And you know, it's weird, but I got told that as an insult. But I'll take that insult because she's fucking insult? beautiful. Yeah. The girl's like, well, you know, you look like Anne Hathaway. And I was like, oh, thanks. And she's like, well, you know. And I'm like, and I told her, I was like, no, I actually don't know what you mean. Yeah, what? Yeah, exactly. What do you mean? <laughs> I was like, she's like, you know. And I'm like, no, I actually don't. And she's like, well, you, you like, it's just the nose and everything. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'll take the insult because she's fucking beautiful. Yeah. Like, right? right? No, so... Anyways, I'm that's, so excited. That's some breaking news here. Um, My heart, geez. like literally today, ugh, that's all I needed. We needed something. Okay, but back to the original question. I'm eating your popcorn. Yeah, eat it. Like, I take it. Actually, I can't eat burnt popcorn. Can you? Eat, anyone else eat burnt popcorn? Because I it's totally can't. It's only mildly burnt. Yeah, but it was like it was weird. The bag, it just went. It stopped turning, and I don't know. I gotta look <laughs> at our microwave. I was like, started to burn. I'm like, ooh. Whoops. Um, basically, what was the question? Oh, speaking of princesses. Yeah. You wanted to talk about the crown. Oh, I did want to talk about crown. We'll catch up with the white lotus, like as time a, goes on. As time goes on, but the crown. Yeah. Uh, I watched this last season. I'm very excited for the next and last season. Then you can binge watch. There's gonna be it. another one. There's a last after this one. one that just came out. Yeah, I think it's right before her diana's death oh. diana's death and then like up until they're like will and kate get married i think interesting yeah so i think that's the premise of this last season but um i'm just i love the crown because it's almost like you're watching history but i'm not a person that watches the crown and believes it i'm like it's so like overtold so then i fact checked everything so as I'm watching The Crown, I go, like, Google actually what happened, which I find that so interesting. And I actually wish a lot of – I like historical inaccuracies. Yeah. Because I, like – I actually, like, oh, you made it into something I want to watch, and now I'm interested, and now I'm going through and looking up the history. As long as you just say it's not factual, that's great. Interesting. But, Didn't the queen watch The Crown? Supposedly. They said she would have viewing sessions and that she would watch it. But, you know, it's really sad that – they didn't she didn't get to watch this last season because i think it's like a very monument like monumental for the queen because it kind of showed like that nearly probably like 10 years ago i was 20 years ago it's basically the queen she, they did not want the queen in power so it was like they represented with the decommission of the britannia which was like their private yacht 
to her because like the Britan- Britannia was the only place she claimed that she could be herself. Uh. So it was like it had to be decommissioned because the taxpayers wouldn't pay the money. So it's kind of like the people don't want her anymore. So they're kind of doing the symbolization between the both. Interesting. But um, I mean, like, I just feel like the crown is so beautifully written. That's and what I, I've heard. I understand like there's like, oh, it's controversy controversial i'm not gonna sit my kids down in 10 plus years and be like this is real no no you have to up the drama no and we're such an educational um truthfully we have to pull from history yeah to truly write something beautiful because something beautiful and something that hasn't been done before i mean she i really do appreciate the first three seasons the last couple seasons it gets more into like the gossip and the dramatics interesting the first two three seasons you kind of get a perspective when there wasn't as much media yeah so there wasn't the tabloids as they are now interesting or even back in the 90s the casting is pretty phenomenal i mean like in the they like i think someone said stop casting a good-looking prince charles I don't want to like him as much as I do. Oh, no. And they do cast some pretty good ones. Uh, basically, Whoever Prince this Phillip, new lady was that's playing the queen. She played Umbridge yes, in Harry Potter. Yes, in Harry Potter. And I was I like... I can't remember her real name. I can only remember her as Umbridge. And I'm like, oh, I hate that bitch. But she's so sympathetic. And this, you, you <laughs> detach her from Umbridge. Oh, the I hate Umbridge in Harry Potter, too. I hate too. her because of Harry Potter. How mm-hmm. sad is that? Like... But that's how good of an actress she is. You forget it's is. her. I, I watched the whole season and then was like, oh, yeah, that is her. That I totally forgot. I well, knew that. Daniel Radcliffe said that she's one of the three that he listed for, like, actors who have the ability to just turn it on. Like, really? she would be, like, hanging out and talking to you like your best friends. And then she could just, like, be like, Harry Potter. I feel like I could see that because she, I feel like out of all the queens – she'd embodied the queen really the most out of all of them like all I could of them see have that. all of them made the queen themselves and she embodied the queen yeah that's the only way i can describe it they made their own versions of it Ugh. she became the queen and the, this version of the girl I, why can't i think of her name that was um princess diana yeah like emma did a great job last season and i just know her name because it was like over and over but she made her own version of diana this other girl she became Diana. Really? Like she just, she took all the nuances and was like, "I'm just gonna do it to the best of my ability." Umbridge was like, "I'm just. I wish I knew their names. I w- that's so like tactless of me." But like, <laughs> uh, she just became the queen. And there's like certain nuances where I'm like, it's hard. Like they have to touch bases with certain stuff, and they actually made Cam Camille Camilla Camilla. Sorry. Um, they actually made Camilla likable. They made her very disinterested in Charles last season. So, but they made her very witty and smart this last season. Okay. So, like, you felt sympathy towards her. Recently in the public, I don't think a lot of people feel sympathy for her, which is odd because you feel like the crown would be like, the crown did something where they gained sympathy to her and then literally within the last few days, that crown sympathy went away. But, like, in retrospect, you look at the dynamics and I think the crown will help rewrite history because they talked about how Diana was manipulated by that BBC writer into doing that interview. She literally was manipulated by them, thinking that the palace was watching her. Um, they were tracking all her movements. They were going to kill her. Like, that BBC writer or article or producer did that to her. And then I someone said that the news started the downfall of Diana, and they finished her off. You know, with the I car mean, crash. Hey. That's I mean, you can't say, and it's not even conspiracy. I, I you don't think she was killed. I don't think, I think the news did it because all they wanted is a story. You know, I don't think the crown, the truthfully, Diana was the crown's biggest asset. It kept them relevant. Yeah. Truthfully, I don't think the crown really cares about Meghan and Harry because it actually keeps them relevant. I know that sounds strange, but they're probably like, yeah, do whatever you so want. So they killed Diana. That's the rumors that the crown did it, but I don't think the crown did it. I think that in their mind, they're probably being selfish. Like, let's keep Diana as a princess of Wales and make it still controversial because it brings relevancy to us. Yeah, they're not they're not dumb human beings. No. They probably made her life hell just to make it hell. 
but they're not going to take away their breadwinner. I did see one scene where... She's uh, voting? No, 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 oh. where uh, Diana is talking to uh, Charles. Yeah. And he's like... At the kitchen table? No, I don't know where they are. He's basically telling her that he like doesn't love her. Okay, yeah. And I'm like, this is like one of the most heart wrenching scenes I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Just going in on Diana and she's just like It's always it was never you, it was always um Camille or whatever her name is. I can't say her name right, it's so horrible. Camilla? Camilla. Camilla. Who's Camilla? Camilla. Uh, his new wife, the woman he was cheating on his whole marriage with, the woman he wanted to marry. Yeah, you gotta watch The Crown. It's a juicy... I really want to. It's one that I really, really want to binge. I, <laughs> I was telling someone, I was like, The Crown is a dedication because there's very slow parts, but once you get hooked in The Crown, it's hard not to stop and that's watching what I've it. Heard. And there could be an hour of a dull episode, but then they do something right at the end and you're like, oh, I gotta, I gotta start the next episode. I love those it's, shows, though. It's a very storytelling um episode i know i'm gonna love it so that's why i get excited when they announce like a new season where it's like on it's just like it's that series you get excited to see interesting and now it's done oh uh, it has one more season yeah and then it's done then it's done because uh in honor of the queen i mean no i think it's more like what else are they gonna talk about harry megan like oh i thought I they mean, were doing it in honor of the queen like they had already filmed this season that's coming out i no, they're actually or filming they, it right they now. They paused filming. They palm, paused filming season six in honor of the queen. Okay. In her passing, but I mean, like, the crown is just going to be something that I think I'd been watch. That wasn't made for views because, yeah. like I said, there's a very slow part. That made it's definitely made for, not made for views. Yeah, it's not it, just anyone can watch that. I can guarantee you when they were making the crown, they're like, let's dump a whole bunch of money into it, and if it sinks, there's nothing we can do. There's, like, nothing we can do. I mean, you look at the success of, like, okay, these are two polar opposites. Mm -hmm. You think of Downton Abbey. So good. Super successful. The best. Great cast. Oh, my God. It's well done. You think of the success of Game of Thrones. Polar opposite. More. um, It's the storytelling. Science fiction. More, like, but it's the way those stories are told. No one tells stories anymore. It's got the element of like the past, the nostalgia, the like, um, like what were the hook? They They literally have the hook. They hook you with stuff that the audience they're making this for has no idea what happened then. They were not alive. Game of Thrones is fictional. They are not making. Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, you think of like Downton Abbey and like mundane and boring. You would think. They are making that show for an audience that did not live through a time or in a place where all of this was happening. Like, half of the viewers of The Crown are not British. Yeah. Guaranteed. It is, like, probably 70% American viewers on that show. There's something where uh, on TikTok, and I don't know why the Brits hate America on TikTok. I understand why the Europeans hate us, but they hate me. Oh, yeah, they for sure do. Anytime we post anything, they hate us. <laughs> but there's this thing where I don't, they don't understand why they want to get rid of the monarchy because the only thing that keeps um, the UK relevant is the monarchy and the eyes of everything. Like, do they think someone referred to the UK as the Ohio? Oh. of europe Rip. and i was like that is true you're technically the ohio of europe and i can contest to that because we live basically in that in the united states valid i mean like i, I a, get it i had a british girlfriend once did you how was she uh she was great we were she lived in was a long she distance? lived in yeah how old are you 14, 13. What the fuck were you doing with the Met British girlfriend? Met her on girlfriend? Facebook. Well, I knew her friend because her friend moved here. You met her through her friend who moved here yeah. and developed a relationship at the age of 14 with yeah. a girl who lived... Stephanie. A couple thousand miles away. About 8,000 miles away. We would Skype. That's an expensive Skype session. It's basically it. I would marry a British girl for sure. Would you? For the accent. I just marry any good looking guy. <laughs> I mean, I don't. 
Well, we talked about a lot of things. We went all over this episode. I know. My I had a poetic, yeah, your ex lover, my poetic tribute to Taylor Swift. Yep. The Princess Diaries. Breaking news. Oh my God. Crazy. I love it. Uh, but God yes. Is looking up at us, Hunter. <laughs> oh, thank God. Finally. Yeah, other things just need to happen too. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, that's it for today's episode. Let us know what your favorite comedy movie is. I have the hiccups. This is just going great. <laughs> yeah, let us know your favorite comedy movie. And basically, I'm the girl that knows nothing. He's the guy that went to film school and told me a bunch of stuff, actually. Well, I'm also the girl that has a Taylor Swift ticket, an extra yep. one. So, so let her know. Yeah, let me know. You comment. Can join her. And. We will not ask for your credit card information. <laughs> just, I got to put that just out there. Just bet her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just putting that out there. It's happened a lot of times that we've done giveaways. This is not a giveaway, though. Oh. Uh, yeah. Basically. No, uh, this is a you buy, you fly. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be friends with me long term or you are Italian boy, that's very cute. Oh. I'll maybe compensate it. Oh, compensating for the Italian boy. My that friend might and I might need a well very good you. distraction. Wait, it might not work out well? No? You'd still make him pay for the ticket. Ticket? Well, if he's flying over from Italy, I think that's... No? Make him pay for the ticket. Ticket? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't want you getting scammed. Scammed? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I'm not transferring that sucker any ticket until I, <laughs> I get funds. He's got to be there Venmo. with you and scan the It's like a little so. puppy I'm yeah, carrying around. Yeah, yeah, you're Italian <laughs> puppy. This got weird. Yeah. We are delusional at this well, point. Well, shoot. Thanks so much for watching Dagbuster Podcast. We will see you guys next week. And as always, be kind. Rewind. Rewind.